demonstration video. Today my card takes its inspiration from the fact that my son's birthday is coming up and my son loves to hunt so I had to kind of think of that and try to make something a little more masculine. If you've watched my videos or you check out my website you realize that I really have had an addiction to butterflies and flowers and I just didn't think that was going to cut it for my son who's going to be 20 so hard to believe. But anyway, even though I'm doing a masculine type card, I am not extremely masculine. So I have my room all set up, my candles on the warmer, I have my shoes for today. How fun are these? My gosh, love the color and they match so cute. So, it's right foot here. Get my shoes on and then I'm going to show you what I'm going to do. The card is um, this one. Just wanted some real subtle backgrounds and actually by the time I was done I felt it kind of looked like a sunset a little bit. In fact, not too much unlike the one that we had here just a few nights ago. So I kind of like how it turned out and it was just from playing around a little bit. He's a big hunter so I wanted to have something with the goose in there. And um, for those of you that like hunting I may even link his video below because um, it's amazing. If you love hunting, he is obsessed and he hunts every chance he can get. He lives, breathes, sleeps hunting. So this card will be so appropriate for him. If I do link a video and you don't like hunting, don't watch it. Okay. All right, let's make this card. Okay, I have my supplies set up for my card and actually this requires very little in the way of supplies. In fact, I had done that card right here and layered it onto some chocolate chip cardstock but today for the demonstration I'm actually just going to use a plain white piece of cardstock and then with all of the um, coloring that I'm going to do with the stamp pads you will see how we transform this without any other papers talk about minimal um, supplies needed for this one I am using wetlands that is the, the stamp set that I'm using and focusing on the goose and then these little reeds or wheat or whatever you want to call it. So that's all I'm going to use. Let's get ready to go. Okay, before I do anything else, I have my card and this is an eight and a half by 11 sheet of cardstock, so a full basic sheet of paper size cut in half. And I'm just going to score it so that when I fold it, I don't make it a little bit crooked, which is sometimes what I do. The nice thing about the Stampin' Up trimmer, it has a scoring blade and then it also has a cutting blade. So when I use that and score this, it just folds like a dream. All right, to start this card, what I need to do is create my background. And I want to kind of to have it look like from the bottom to the top, it was looking out at a field and then up through the sky. So on my original one, I started with old olive, but in looking further, I'm going to use the soft suede. And I'm going to take just one of my um, these started out as a full circle sponge and I just cut them into fourths so that I can use more colors without having to worry about it um, rubbing off on another ink pad. So I'm going to start with a soft suede on the bottom and I'm just rubbing is all I'm doing kind of in a circular motion and I'm kind of liking how it kind of is getting kind of bunchy at the bottom like dirt. Okay. Then I'm going to take old olive and I think I'm going to just kind of use the other side of this. One of the things I try to do when I'm sponging like this is not start swirling it around like bam right in the middle because sometimes that will leave a little bit of a mark. I think I want to go a little bit higher with this and then trying to really make sure I get those two colors kind of blended together. Okay then thinking about how this would look if I was actually looking out um, I am going to use that um, pumpkin pie color or kind of a burnt orange color is what you'd want to use and I love this with that old olive. If you look at these two colors together, 
I love those. So that's why I kind of decided to put those side by side more than basing it on my vast knowledge of sunsets. <laughs> and again, as I do this, I want to really make sure that I'm rubbing it around where those two colors meet. And then the last part is the sky, which, you know, I could just jump in and use the soft sky color, but the other night the sky had the prettiest shade of kind of a pinkish red going through it. So I did take this rose red. In fact, when I made this card the other night when I was just kind of playing around with cards, um, I kind of just did the red. Okay, I've got that really heavy, so I'm going to try and get some of that off of there and then try to blend some of that together. I don't want it too heavy, although I'm, I have to say I'm kind of liking that look. And my last one is Soft Sky. I just wanted to get, you know, after I had done my card, and I will show you again here, this one, and it's already looking quite a bit different. I was much heavier this time. We'll see how it turns out. Um, I just had the pinkish up here. And then decided, you know, a sky should probably have a little bit of blue. So that's why I took then and added in that bluish. And I might have made these colors. Oh, they're way darker than I had done the first first time. Looks like I'm needing to re-ink my soft sky. That's going to be giving me, let me see here. I think when you do this, you just have to kind of play around with it. I'm getting it all over my fingers, but some people, you know, use little clips on these. So they don't get it on their fingers. I'm just going to pull some of that pumpkin pie or like a burnt orange color up into that a little bit more. There, it didn't, that way it's kind of making it a little less pink. I don't know if I really wanted the pink color so much. Okay. I'm gonna go back to my brown. Just seeing if I can soften this up a little bit. Okay. Well, let's give it a shot with that and I'm gonna see what I think. All right, Wetlands, again, is the, the um, stamp set that I'm using. And I'm going to stamp it with um, basic black. And of course, as I'm doing this, I'm always rethinking. I'd almost be tempted to try one just with using that chocolate chip color, but I'm gonna use the black for today. So the first thing I'm gonna do is get my goose over here on the side. And I didn't want him like right in the middle, so he's a little left of center. Kind of a tumultuous looking sky there, which I kind of like. And then on the other side of this, I have the little wheat strands. I'm going to show you what I'm going to do with this. Um, I took my goose stamp because I want to, I want to mask him. I want to be able to stamp quite a few of those little uh, reeds, those little wheat strands around that goose. So I took just a regular piece of paper from my copier from my printer that I have and I stamped with black that goose stamp. Then I took a scissors and just cut around the edges. I didn't I didn't fussy cut which is what I've heard people call it um, all the stuff around here because I really I knew that I just didn't want the goose to be covered up. So I did that and then I took something that I have that's just not a, a very strong adhesive one of my little scrapbooking tools that's just the little dots and to tell you the truth it just doesn't hold very well but it holds great for things like this and I just lay him down so he has masked what I have stamped and the one thing that you realize with stamping is if you're trying to have an image be on the forefront when you're stamping it it's actually the reverse that's actually the first one that you do then you cover it and stamp the other stuff around it 
So I have him covered up so I can take my wheat and I can stamp that around. And I'm going to try. So I can stamp right on top of that paper. And I want to use like the second stamp. In fact, I'm going to stamp it off once to try to make this a little fuller without being so dark. Maybe he's way in there. Oh my gosh, okay, I have a splotch on here and it looks like a goose way off in the distance. <laughs> Ooh, that was so planned, so talented. <laughs> okay, then I just peel this off and he stays, you know, he's not muddled up by the ink or anything. I actually really like that. Then I'm gonna use the sentiment birthday greetings because it's going to be his birthday. Can't believe my baby boy is gonna be 20. And I decided I didn't even want to layer that. I just want, you know, he's not gonna be so much into the fancy schmancy cards, but more just basic for him. So there you have a very simple card. I actually like how this guy turned out. You can see though, when I hold the two up together, make sure I have them both in the film, that this one is much darker than the other. But you know what? On any given day, I would pick one or the other for my favorite. I don't think I would always go with the same one. So there you have it. Very simple. This one in particular, a one piece card. Not very often that I do that. I usually like to layer a little bit of paper. Okay, normally I would stop there, but I am going to give you a preview because I think I have made my favorite card. And I'm sorry, Ty, I don't think my son watches these videos, but if he does, I made a different card, not for his birthday, but one that personally I have fallen in love with. So I'm just going to show it to you because it's going to be my next video. Ta-da! Love this. Once again, back in my flowers and especially with the flower punches. Oh my gosh, I'm in love. So make sure you subscribe so you don't miss this one. See you later.